Welcome back to the channel. So we've got something very, very special this time and something ultra rare. And not only that, it's camper converted. So what have we got? So this Rich is a Pinsgauer Synergy 1. Um, there's only two of these left. They originally made six of them. Four of them went overseas on deployment. The other two stayed in a storage container or a hangar somewhere in the UK. So it had about 1500 mile on it when we first got it. It's got about 9,000 mile on it now. Um, yeah, like I say, there's only two of them and I want the second one. So this isn't just a show pony. You literally got this back together, didn't you? And you took it straight to North Africa. Yeah, so, the, the, I mean, it looks great. The, the, it was painted down um, at the smallest cog, Richard Hammond's workshop, you might have seen his TV show. Uh, it was painted down there, and within four days of getting it back, we built a camper, did all the electrics, managed to get somebody to make us a bed within like the space of 12 hours, uh, and then put it all together, and on the fourth day, that was it, we were heading for Calais, and then went through France, Spain, and then straight into Africa. So within maybe two and a half days, we was in Africa from building the truck. Yeah. And between this and he's got a lovely, lovely Puma Defender, which is coming up on, in the episodes. This is kind of your transition from the military to civilian life now, isn't it? And you're going to take what you've already done all over the world and yeah. adapt yeah. that, aren't you? So I've been very fortunate in my military career to travel across most continents. Um, I've been up to the Arctic Circle. I've done the jungles. I've done Africa and other places like that and even further east. And I managed to gain a lot of experience and then when I put it into my hobby, I wanted to build something that was comfortable because military vehicles are not comfortable things to be in, especially if you're sleeping off in minus 27 in, a, in a, basically a canvas tarp at the side of the wagon. I was like, no, I like doing this, but I'm going to be comfortable. So I've taken all that experience of knowing what the army got wrong in crew comfortability, essentially, and I've combined it into something that I think is very user friendly. And whilst everybody else is setting up camp, I've noticed all I've got to do is open that back door and get a fridge, like open the fridge yep. and get a beer out. And that it's, hard shell camper kind yeah, of it's, recipe. Yeah, yep. it's, if it's raining, I don't even have to get out the vehicle. Yep. I can climb through to the back, no problem. So, yeah, it's a great setup. Um, and I think there's a few bits of stuff we can do to tweak it to make it right. But I think we've hit the nail on the head almost instantly. So the rear of the vehicle, and it's deceptively small in here because it's, everything's built around just getting off-road and the extreme capabilities, but you've still managed to get enough room to sleep in here for two people, haven't you? Yeah, you can get two people sleeping in here. You can probably fit five people along this bench as well if you're just sitting and talking and yep. having a beer if it's raining outside. Yeah, it's, because it's the same length as a Defender, but you sat in front of the front axle, Yes. you then gain the whole length yeah. Um, and it's as wide as Discovery, so hmm. it's it would look a lot bigger once the new windows are going to be in it. Then it'll let more light and it'll feel a lot bigger. But yeah, you can quite easily get two people in here sleeping, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of energy system? Because with the Overland Company, you've cost me money now because you've talked me into having Renergy. Yes, I have. So you are the Renergy guy, aren't you? I am, and I'm also running Victron in this. <laughs> <laughs> So well, this, this was your test base, wasn't it? This, this was why this you are is the Renegy why guy. I don't have Victron in vehicles. And unfortunately, Victron is the only company out there at the minute that I can run their system in this vehicle because it's 24 volt. The lithium system in the back I want is 12 volt. So that Victron are the only people at the minute, I know some gen, but at the minute, they're the only people that do 24 to a 12 volt DC DC charger that's worth having. And it's not really worth having because there's no built-in fan, there's nothing like that, so it overheats and we've had to do There's going to be here. upset people here that just get the blue stuff and think it's the best ever. Yeah. And Victron, I, yep. run, I run Victron on my Land Rover and I've loved running the Victron on my Land Rover. However, I think they've lived, lived off the brand for far too long and they haven't moved as fast as everybody else in the industry. People have come in, they've... Victron dropped the ball and other people have picked it up now. Yeah, th thanks for that. That's just cost me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully you'll be and happy with it. This is my Victron. Oh, 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 this is my Renergy dealer. 100%. I'm the dealer. No, the Renergy dealer. I'm the Renergy dealer. Yeah. Um, so in, inside here, water capacity, you know, you, you live in space. How is this better than just an empty vehicle? What have you done to make this? 
So you've got to remember we've had four days to build this. It looks okay, but it's not to my standard. This is yep. not how I would normally build a vehicle. It looks great, everyone loves it, but I know I can do a hell of a lot better if you give me more than four yep. days. This is Mark 1 to get you this on the trip. This is Mark 1 to get us out the door. Um, so water capacity, we've got a massive fridge here. So we're putting big bottles of water in there. There's storage underneath here that we can strap stuff down with and then next to the fridge. And we've got that massive uh, chest along the rear as well that we can put stuff in. And underneath the bed is one big storage tray as well with different awesome. segments in it. So. Unlike the Defender, without giving too much away, where there's some really cool systems on that. Make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a follow-up video with the Defender. Yeah, the, this this is the one that looks amazing. Technologically speaking, the Defender is as good as it can get. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, this like I say, we're going to rip all this out, and this will then have uh, its own water tank. We're going to do some clever stuff with where the starter batteries are and things like that, and we're going to move some stuff around, and it'll be really cool. But yeah, uh, this is the minute is good but we can do a lot better. So with a vehicle like this, this is where, and it's almost like with my Sprinter, I'm used to, I've run Defenders and Discoveries for the last two decades, and I know if I break something, my mate Dave has got three gearboxes on his shed floor. I've never seen someone on Facebook Marketplace with a gearbox for one of these. That would be because a gearbox for one of these is 18,000 pound. However, there's a bloke up in Scotland called Dale, who runs Halflinger Technic, he is the most swept up bloke I would bet my money on in the world when it comes to pins gowers. He's got every single part you could possibly ever need. Um, so when, when's the invite to go and look at that one, if you're watching this? Hey, if you're watching this, Dale, <laughs> got some, uh, some footage, mate, this is your man. So yeah, he has every single part you could possibly ever need for a pins gower, down to a bolt. If there was some weird spurious bolt you found on your truck, yep. he will have it. Real world though, these don't break, do they? If you've broke one, you've done really, really well. There's a reason gearboxes are £18,000. It's yeah. because they don't break. And there will be some bootneck in the comment section that are going, I actually destroyed one of these in Sainsbury's car park. <laughs> yeah, well well done. You're probably the only bloke who's ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now these things are... Everything some, breaks, but these are phenomenally reliable. If there's reliable. something that you're not going to break, it's one of this, which is why I feel very confident taking it to places like the desert in Morocco and things yeah. like that. It's because it's a bit like a Toyota. You turn the key, you know it's going to work, and you know we're going to get home with it. Yeah. It, everything's There's no electrics to go wrong anyway, so anything's always mechanical. Now, with mechanical stuff like your Land Rover, if a front diff goes, we well, just take the prop off and run it in rear-wheel drive. It's yes. exactly the same principle, just everything's bigger, a mm. lot bigger. You know, a shock bolt is this big, yes. not this big. Um, so stuff just doesn't break. And it, I know I'll probably drive home now and something will break, but yeah, you know what I mean? No, it's... it's um, it's Daimler, isn't it? I mean, the, the gearbox and everything on, on my Sprinter, that's Daimler. Yeah. And it's been a bit of a mind twist to get my head out of that Land Rover thing of going, yeah. it just works. It just works. Yeah. In, in in 12 months, it owes me an alternator, which could have been going for years anyway. Yeah. It's it's a strange, strange thing. So the thing, when, Another thing with this is the, uh, the four-wheel drive system that's on it. This gets a little bit technical now, but it's all run off vacuum. Mm. But what the vacuum system does is keep it out of four-wheel drive and in rear-wheel drive. So if the vacuum system breaks, you still have a Defender. Yeah, yeah, absolute worst case, it it's tougher. In, it, it, if it, the worst thing that happens is it gets better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So sh short of a wheel bearing going and you you're losing something like that, it's just going to keep going. Until... Yeah, and Dale will post me anything I need out anywhere in the world and yep. it will get to me very quickly. And you've got a bomb-proof half-million-mile VW engine in it. Yeah. Half million miles it's, it's comfortably. A, it's a good recipe, isn't it? It's only done 9,000 9, miles in 20 years. So. It is the best Land Rover 101 ever. Yeah. it's a, as Richard Hammond put it the best way. It's a G-Wagon that's forward control. I want it. Yeah. 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 That's the coolest thing about it. It's Mercedes uh, dials and things like that along here. Uh, all the buttons are from Mercedes when they built the truck originally in the first place. So we've not really needed to touch all that. There's no electrics. It's all There's no ECUs or anything like that. So you don't need to start digging around and, and fixing problems that they could have been. Um, but what we have done is the seats, these are the original seats, uh, they the were green, they're now black, and the sound deadening as well, that's a big one. So these vehicles normally sit quite loud on a motorway, but now with the sound deadening you can easily have a conversation at 80 mile an hour, no problem. So next thing we did after the sound deadening and the seats, they were the crucial sort of components to the vehicle for drivability. We then removed what was an aircon system up here. Um, I managed to get very lucky and meet one of the people in the military that operated this vehicle in service. Uh, so when we were discussing whether we keep the aircon or get rid of the aircon, it was 
a big game changer when we found out that the aircon didn't really do anything in the first place even when it was out being used so so yeah we got rid of this fascia panel here and then uh, we decided to put the lights for the exterior of the truck so we've got front top front middle which isn't fitted yet and front uh, bottom which isn't which also isn't fitted yet this is left hand side rear and right hand side of the truck they're seeing lights on the exterior of the vehicle they work brilliantly at night not too much not too little so looking at the dash you can see there's not really much of a place that you could put uh, a nice stereo system in it the doors you can't really fit any speakers in there and yeah the, by the time you've spent the money on a decent set of speakers and head unit you could be talking 1500 quid for something that's worth putting in a vehicle like this so we decided hang on a minute let's just break the mold a little bit here let's do something billy basic and simple that works so then i went about and bought the biggest bowl of sound bar i could find and then uh, that connects to the inverter that's in the rear of the truck and the sound is crisp if i want to i can take the bowls out i can put it next to the truck so everybody can listen to the music uh yeah and it's pitch perfect all the way through it sounds a little bit weird at first once you've got in a vehicle and then the speaker's coming from behind you but you soon get used to it because it's such a good sound system so the comms uh, and cameras that we're working with we're basically just running a thunderpole t3000 um cb radio i'd like to go towards the hf and stuff like that but the problem is nobody else in this country uses hf so it'd be a bit of a waste of money to be honest with you the camera system there is not hard wired hard wired in at the minute but it will be soon um and that's just a reversing camera that is wi-fi connected to the rear and then you can get a big nice picture from the back because trying to see out of one of these things is quite difficult it's only the length of a defender but there's a lot less visibility uh, and then we've got the garmin overlander as well there which we just use for navigation back up for wherever we are in the world right so obviously this the very 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 strange thing about these vehicles is they don't have a traditional chassis it is like a stick insect it is a weird thing um i'll show you just here and as you can see it's this thing's just built to crawl um but what kind of range you got out of this so this is the small tank that's on it at the minute uh they, they did three different tank sizes this was air portable for the s because it's the sf variant it was air portable you could deploy it anywhere in the world so this is the smallest tank to keep the weight down and then there's jerry can on the back as well but with that tank we can get 400 miles and that's still smaller than a defender 110 tank so we can get about 400 miles out of it plus the 20 jerry can on the uh, on the rear as well there so you talk maybe 550 maybe 600 mile quite easily that that is a good good range 600 mile so the drive line itself obviously we started at the engine we've tweaked the engine we've tuned the engine it's now running a hell of a lot more power but the drive line is the weak spot so that's why you've got to keep that engine just under the 200 brake horsepower line because the drive line is extremely strong when it comes to putting power down but the second you go over 200 brake horsepower you're starting to put pressure on wheel bearings and portal axles and things like that so then moving back we've got the gearbox uh, and then from the gearbox is a single prop shaft that comes out to the transfer box now after the transfer box everything else is encased in a, a, a torsion resistant tube chassis which means that the front tow bar and the rear tow bar are completely connected together it's an extremely strong system now noticing that it isn't a ladder chassis and it's that torsion chassis, uh, torsion resistant tubular chassis the independent suspension on it has to be quite trick now a normal defender or sorry or even the new Defender actually, the normal Discovery, after Discovery 2, so 3 onwards, you've got your upper and lower control arms to move the wheel up and down. With this, it's essentially a, def a Defender axle that bends at the diff instead of on the, uh, the bump stops instead. So it's extremely strong, um, and you can get up to 70 mile an hour down a forest track with this, and you won't feel a single bump. So, on the top, storage is king. So, with the camper vans, although it is a big box and you want to shove everything in there, you've also got to bear in mind that when you're living in the vehicle, where do you put all your kit? So, you have had a lovely custom roof rack made, haven't you? Yeah, so this is, uh, a, again, a complete one-off custom. It looks extremely heavy, however, it's only around about the 60 kg mark. It's made from the same stuff that Warrior Armoured Fighting Vehicles are made from, so it's quite strong as well. And then when you couple it with these rock sliders which were originally wood and you don't want to know the price of getting a new set of them um, we've had these out of stainless steel now instead with these uh, nice ladders that go up the side so it's not a roll cage but it's got it a helps. lot more strength there yeah, than just yeah. having a tin roof i would rather go over on the side with that on the roof than without it yeah a million definitely percent. and looking at the height of the vehicle you weighed in depth I need a snorkel before the car will cut out. Yeah, so this is yeah. old school mechanical diesel. Yep, old school. Yep. There's, there's not a single ECU on this on this vehicle. So it's EMP everything, proof as well. E yeah, everything is run off a relay and a fuse. So you carry a couple of spare relays and a couple of spare fuses and you can get yourself out of any problem whatsoever. So this is the ultimate get you out of yeah. this kind if of this, vehicle. If there's one vehicle I could spend the rest of my life with, it's the Pinsgower. The, the, every time you start 
the, the engine. It just invites adventure out of you. It mm. doesn't want to go to the shops. It doesn't want to go to go and get a, you know, a pint of milk or something like that. It, it wants to turn the key and it's like a puppy. It just wants to go and go and go. It wants to eat miles away over any terrain. It doesn't care what you bring with you. As long as it's going, it's yeah. happy. It wants to carry on going. So now that you've done Morocco and that's kind of your test as the first fit out, yep. you're happy, you know which bits yeah. you, you want to change. Over the winter, into next spring, what, what kind of things are you planning with it? So we're looking at doing Iceland next. That's I've done the desert, now I want to go drive over a volcano instead. Yep. Um, it's going to want some nice windows in the back. We've got the time now. That's a great thing where we've not had it before. You know, you've got the time and no money, you've got no money in the time. So yep. at the minute, we've got the time. So we're going to put some nice windows either side of it um, and then a diesel eater. That's the only thing this is missing. Um, but yeah, and then. So let's here's go. a painful one windows in the side of something that there's only two of in the world you know me now by now rich i don't mind cutting holes in trucks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind cutting holes in trucks yeah because all all i think is for those that don't know the price tag on this is as it stands now is almost the price of my house and when it's usa exportable in a few years time it's a good house um for one of these oh, yeah. so, so cutting yeah. a hole in the side of it is is sacrilege almost some people it, would call yeah, it yeah yeah the yeah. The, the tight yorkshire in, in me is like mm. what the hell are you doing <laughs> i totally get why you're doing it yeah. and there's yeah. nothing better than having the side windows in the yeah. vehicle but yeah. ooh, you're a brave man <laughs> oh who cares mate it's only it's only a piece of metal at the end of the day isn't it you know as good as they are and as capable as they are it's still a piece of metal mate it's it's only worth what somebody's ever going to pay for it. Luckily, somebody will pay quite a lot of money for it. But yeah, it's uh, it's, it's not going anywhere for a good while. So I'm, I'm more than happy to start cutting holes in it. Yeah. Fair one. So as we're moving around the vehicle, um, we've got these two lockers here. What are you using these for? So 24 volt system. So in one of them, we've got two 12 volt batteries that are then linked. And that creates a 24 volt. And in the other one, it's just a bog standard storage bin. So let's get rid of those. Yep. Relocate the batteries and then put a 70 litre water tank there instead. Fair one, yeah. In here? That's actually very interesting. I completely forgot about that. So this originally would have been where a lot of comms kit and generators and stuff would have plugged into the vehicle for the military. But they leak. So we cut the back up, took them off, cut the back off, welded a steel plate on it, seal it up, put it back on. Looks original, not original, doesn't leak. The tie-down tabs here, what are these for? So this vehicle originally, um, like I say, there was only six of these made and they were made in a hurry. They were made fast. So originally it would have been one of the soft top variants, but then they decided to put the hard top back on it for the SF. These tabs are remnants of the original right. soft top roof where it would have linked over and kept yep. in. Again, you could take them off and probably get a little bit of a nicer paint job around that area, but it's just something different, you know. You never know when you might want to strap something over the roof and you've got tie down points still. Fair, yeah. 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 So, lighting on the front of the vehicle, I see you've got the, the light bar up in your custom roof rack. Yep. Yeah, so that's a hella light bar. Uh, you didn't really need to go mad because, to be honest with you, the next step is to put two laser lights inside the A-frame here. The ones we've got the triple R's are a little bit deep though, so we're gonna have to do a little yep. bit of fabricating to get those in, but they'll go in. And then we're toying with the idea of some DRLs and the bumper and things like that, but I don't know if it'd be a bit overkill at that point. Um, the other lights we've got as well are these uh, ORE headlights, the ones that you fit in the Defender. Same fitment, just put them straight into this. Yep. Uh, and the only reason Richard Hammond's got a set of them is because we told him to buy them after he saw the pins and we fit them to this. So yeah. Trend setter. Trend setting, absolutely. For the front, I know you're probably never going to need it. Are you going to go winch? Because I know how capable this is, <laughs> yep. but yep. I've found that I've winched other people and objects more than I've winched myself. It is a tool. It is a great tool. Would I put one on? Yes. Is it on the high priority list? Definitely not at the minute. I've got three locking diffs, portal axles. Yep. To get this stuck, you have to do some serious work. Yep. Um, and when it comes to getting other people out of situations where you saw at the winter camp, nobody else could get to Louise. That's it, yeah. We just drove straight in, didn't spin a wheel and just, come on, you're coming. Yeah, that was dead weight, flat battery, buried up to the axles and it pulled it. Yeah, yeah. on so. wet grass on a slope uphill. Yep. Leaning to the right. So it's, it's not bad off-road. It's not too bad, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's this here, though? So that, to be honest with you, mate, when I first picked it up, I thought that was where you put a jimpy barrel through, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, there's a little vent on the inside, and I was playing around with it, and there's another little lever there, and I was like, maybe that's how you fire the jimpy. It's not anyway. So yeah, the, uh, that is a, a channel that, you know like the Defender, where you open the vents yeah, at the front? Yeah. It's the same thing, but it, it, yeah, it looks like that instead. And it's actually really, really well thought out. Oh, it works great. 
Uh, it's nice. Even to with water it. coming in, it's spraying. Well, you can close it off and things like that. Like, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want the water screwing that high in. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just done all the carpet, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Big thanks to Liam. If you've made it this far as well, thank you very much. All the information will be in the description box below. There'll be his website and his socials on there. And uh, like I said, this is Mark One to get on the trip. The perfected one is his defender, and it's coming up. So make sure you hit the subscribe. Ready for the next video. Thanks again. No worries, Rich.